Good morning. Welcome to worship. So glad everybody could be here today. We have another baptism. We had one last week. I'm, I'm kind of happy we have a smaller child, a younger child, one that won't fight me and um, hopefully like, like just feel like I'm trying to like, drown him or something. I mean, I'm only pouring water over the head, right? So anyway, welcome to Harlow and her family. It's great. She's got a, a wonderful support system, a good fan club. So thank you for being here today. Uh, one of the traditions that we have at this church is to, we have a printout of, of the date that Harlow is being baptized. And we have everybody sign it. It's the idea that she is surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And so I'm going to start it on this side. There's a pen at the top. And uh, if you just make sure it's, don't go all John Hancocky and get huge, you know, just a, a nice little signature so everybody knows who was here. But it's such a, a privilege to, to be here to witness this event. Uh, you, hopefully you saw a lot of the different things that are going on this week on the Prelude video. There's still time if you're interested in doing the Explore St. Barnabas. It'll be down in the Family Life Center. Uh, if you want to know more about the church or interested in joining, we'd love to have you. Uh, and then the other thing is I, uh, I would love your prayers Wednesday and Thursday. My husband and I are heading up to, to Mayo. Um, he's been dealing with stage 4 cancer for couple years now. So he, we go for a scan and uh, talk to the doctor. So uh, we know in June it had kind of woken up and had moved on from um, its origin to um, explore other parts of his body again. So uh, it's not as bad as the last time, but um, hopefully the new treatment they put him on will show it to be working. Um, otherwise, he gets to start radiation, so uh, super fun, super fun. So anyway, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday we have the scan, and Thursday uh, we talk to the doctor. So thanks for your prayers for that. I think that's all I've got. I will warn you, we, I try to get super techie this week. I know, what was I thinking? I know, and, and so I've got some videos uh, to show today. And I don't, I, for our online, our at-home worshiping folks, I hope this works well. Uh, Mark is trying a few new things, so, so we're sorry if, if, if it doesn't work the first time, but we feel like it's a good choice to move on this way. So move up. We're, we're moving up, right? So anyway, also this, this time of the year is our stewardship campaign, the time when we talk about all that God has given to us and why we give back and what that looks like. And so we have these faith talks that have been absolutely amazing. Really thankful that the people who stepped up to give them have given them. Last week we had some technical difficulties. This week hopefully it works uh, because it's from Danielle. And Danielle is here. She's sliding down in her seat as we, she's. I, I think that you'll really, I think that you'll really enjoy it. I, I, she just does a great job of talking about what generosity has meant in her life. And it works uh, for the theme. Our theme this year is encouraging a culture of generosity. St. Barnabas was the encourager. That's what his name meant. And so that's, that's one of the reasons we chose that as our theme. So without further ado. To me, generosity is being able to give of yourself with gratitude. It is the recognition of the blessings that you have been given throughout your life and then having an opportunity and taking advantage of it to be the blessing in someone else's life. The core examples of generosity in my life came from my mom. While me and my siblings didn't always realize how little we had in regards to money, it was because we saw her constantly giving to others. Be it her time babysitting so a single mom can work, volunteering at schools, teaching Christian education, to the gift of not being quick to judge. She taught us to value others and to embrace what they bring to the table. By being a generous person at her heart, 
She filled our hearts, our minds, and our home, and our lives with more than we could ever imagine. Because of my mom, our home became a safe place for many of our friends growing up. They felt unjudged and loved because she gave so very openly and freely. There was never a doubt that she would be there to listen to them and love them unconditionally. From troubles at their homes to issues with boyfriends or that tragic bus train accident, she kept the door open, always. They still call her mom to this day. I learned early by example that generosity is not just about a cash gift. While sometimes that may be what is needed, generosity is also about giving what you have at that moment of need. Time, talents, prayers, a shoulder or an ear to help lift someone, to allow someone to rest, to encourage them, or to help when they are hurting. I truly feel that when we are able to openly give to those in need, we shift our focus off ourselves and it's then that our cups become full. They become full of the true gifts of life. I have always been the person to help others, but it is so very hard for me to ask for help. When I was down, my people came to me. They lifted me. They were the ears, the shoulders. They helped when I was hurting, and they provided when I fell short. These are the things that life is about, showing up through generosity. Pastor Sarah has reiterated this meaning of generosity that I hold so close to my heart. St. Barnabas was there for me in ways that I didn't realize I would need the last few years. While I wasn't always in a position to give monetarily in comparison to what I felt I had been given, I was repeatedly reiterated with example that generosity isn't about that. Being grateful for what we are given can lead us to being generous. My gratitude for St. Barnabas was shown in ways that were needed. I was able to give up my time. I gave back as I could in moments of need. I volunteered and I showed up gratefully. Additionally, this past year, my family was in a position to increase our monthly tidings. I continue to serve on boards when there is a need, and we volunteer and help where we can. Dave and I hope to continue to be examples to our children, and in the end, to love like Jesus wants us to, openly, without judgment, and with generosity and gratitude for all we have been given. Thank you. Mom is actually here today, right there. Uh, it's, you know, that's the beauty of the mask is you can't tell when people are like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe it was, um, yeah, also you can use the mask to wipe your eyes. Okay. Maybe it was just perfect that it didn't work last week and your whole family was here to be able to see that. Thanks, Danielle. So. Without further ado, I think it's time to worship. Please join me in standing as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. God of unlikely and undeserved blessings, be with us today. Thank you for those times when your gracious activity has exceeded our expectations. Help us as we journey. Help us see you in our dreams. Help us to say what Jacob said. How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And now centered for worship and trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Please take a moment for silent reflection. Let us pray. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, 
renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. People of God, hear the good news of God. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, like Jacob, who dreamed of your promises, you have filled us with dreams too. Show us your promises in our dreams and give us the courage and the strength to follow our dreams. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is from Genesis, the 27th chapter, verses 1 through 4, 15 through 23, and chapter 28, 10 through 17. Two weeks ago, we began at the beginning of Genesis with creation. We skipped over Adam and Eve, Cain killing his brother Abel, Noah's ark and the flood, and we landed at Sarah and Abraham's miracle baby, Isaac, born to them in their old age. Last week, we heard the story of Abraham nearly sacrificing Isaac at God's command. And this week, we find ourselves at the story of Isaac and Rebekah's adult twin sons, Jacob and Esau. When Jacob was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son, Esau, and said to him, My son, and he answered, Here I am. He said, See, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go to the field and hunt game for me. Then prepare for me savory food such as I like, and bring it to me to eat so that I may bless you before I die. Then Rebekah took the best garments of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kid goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the savory fruit, food and bread that she had prepared to her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father, and Isaac said, here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am a sow, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because the Lord, your God, granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, that I may fee feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son, Esau, or not. So Jacob went up to his father, who felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now...
Let's see, I know that Hunter, do you want to come up for a children's message? I have something special to show you. Would you like to come up? And Kira, do you want to come on up? Anyone else want to come up? Ricky and Jenny are like, nah, we're too old now. We're too old. All right, so here's what I want to show you. Any idea what this is? Do you know what this is? Is it a bunch of old rotten leaves at the bottom of a cage? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. But it is more. Kira, do you know what's in here? What's in here? Leaves. Leaves. Yes. I don't like the leaves. Let me show you something magical that's inside here. So that's the yucky leaves, but look at the top. What do you see at the top? I don't do you see some green things at the top? Yeah. How many do you see? Can you count them? One, two, three, four. That's right, four. Hunter, you're a good counter. That's right. One, two, three, four. Uh, so last week, I'll give you a hint. Last week, these were crawling around on the floor, and they were about this big, and they were something called caterpillars. Do you know what these are going to become? Butterflies. You do know what these are. That's right. They're going to be butterflies. So these are called, this is a hard word. Are you ready? Yeah. Chrysalis. Chrysalis. Very good. Kara, can you say chrysalis? Chrysalis. Chrysalis. That's right. So there are four chrysalises, and they're going to become butterflies. And I wanted to show you, can I show you a video about the butterflies? Okay, because Miss Donna and I in the office have been raising butterflies. This is actually our second set. I know, right? And I made a video to show you how, what happens with our butterflies. Do you want to see the video? Yeah. Okay, so let's go sit over in the chairs. We'll bring our chrysalis friends with us so they can watch too. Kira, wait, 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 come here. You want to sit by it? Kira, do you want to sit by the chrysalises, or do you want to sit by me? Here, come sit here. All right, so we're going to watch a video. Are you ready? Yeah. We'll see if this worked out. So this is where they start. They start on milkweed out in our church. And see that little round thing in the circle? That's the egg. That's how they start. And then, then they get a new home. And then look, you see that teeny tiny. And then they get bigger. And then they get really big. Yes. And then they start to crawl up to the top and get into chrysalises and they make a J. And that means they're almost ready. And this is, uh, we found them. We caught it just at the very end, turning into a chrysalis. That's one of those that's up there. It's this one right there. Yep, that one. And it wriggles and wriggles into that chrysalis. And then that's what it looks like. And then a couple days later, you can see the wings. You can almost see the wings. They've almost formed. And then it comes out. And then we have to release it. So there's the video. There's one of them. There it goes. There we go. And then... I don't know why Debbie gets to, okay, that's what it looks like when it's all done. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yay, butterflies. God really does a good job creating us, doesn't Don't you think so? Yeah. God makes us to be so beautiful. Like little Harlow is just a baby now, but then someday she's going to get big like you guys. And then another time, like then a little bit later, she's going to get even taller, like see Daniela behind you? See? She is smaller than you, that's right, but someday she's gonna grow up and big. Yeah, she's just a little kid compared to you, huh? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then someday, Harlow will grow into a, a woman like me or like Hunter's mom or like your mom or your grandma, right? 
And, and, and here's the thing. What's so exciting when we see something like this, we know that God just is such an amazing creator of so much. I know, and you just want to be by them, don't you? I know. It's a few more days, though. You'll, I tried that before, being right next to them and watching them, and it doesn't work. You just sit there for a long time. Nothing happens. Um, so anyway, here's what I want you to remember, Kira and Hunter. I want you to remember always how amazing God created you to be. Do you think you could remember that? Yeah? yeah? It's not that hard, right? Yes, you're going to be right up there to see us dump the water on your sister. That's right. That's right. Are you excited about that? Okay, we're, well, you, so you, got, you have to wait a few minutes because we have a sermon first. But then we get to watch, you know, Carlo getting water dumped on her. All right, so how about if we say a prayer? Let me see your praying hands. Kara, can I see your praying hands? And you brought your friend too? Your baby, yeah. And your sunglasses. Those are great sunglasses. Okay. Let's pray first, and then you can tell me stuff. Okay, that sounds great. Excellent. Okay, so let's hold our hands, and let's pray. So let me close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Okay. Dear God, thank you for making us to be so amazing. Thank you for caterpillars and butterflies that remind us of how beautiful we are. And help us to always remember how beautiful we are. Help us to also tell other people how beautiful they are. Thank you, God, for making us so wondrously. We pray this in Jesus' name and all the children said, amen. Okay, guys, thanks for coming up. You can go back to your mom and dad now, okay, or your grandma and grandpa. When your own children cease to be interesting, you adopt others. <laughs> Actually, they just have ceased to think that I'm amazing, so <laughs> at least something likes me in my life, right? Anyway, enough about my children. Let us center ourselves. Please join me in a prayer. God, indeed, you have made us wonderfully and fearfully. Thank you. Thank you, too, that you give us these amazing blessings, blessings of family, of friends, church, of nature, of miracles. Keep us open to those blessings. Help us to remember they never end. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the sermon prep for today was probably some of the funniest studying I have done in a long time. Tears rolled down my cheeks as I watched videos of high-level sibling rivalry. I mean, I fought hard with my sister and brother when we were growing up, but we had nothing to the kids in the videos that I watched. You can see in their eyes just how satisfying it is to irritate the heck out of their brother or sister. I mean, really, like, I'm like, you might need a little, like, uh, um, blessing yourself, child. Basically, these videos that I watched clearly illustrate the relationship between Jacob and his twin brother Esau. Their sibling rivalry was epic. There's one video of twin babies vying for one pacifier. If there had been pacifiers back then, this would have been 
Esau and Jacob, the video that I watched. One plucks it from the mouth of the other, shoves it in his mouth. The other one sets up a howl until he figures out how to steal back what is rightfully his, right? This goes back and forth until one of the twin babies figures out how to turn her head when her sibling reaches for the pacifier. It's so satisfying, right? It's amazing. Now, I couldn't keep all the fun to myself, so I decided to show you a sibling rivalry video created by adults who are acting like children. Um, this is basically, uh, what we're gonna show you is uh, basically my entire childhood. Um, there's just less crying in this video, and also there's no blood in this video. I don't know, it's not quite as lifelike as I'd want it to be. So anyway, let's see if this thing works here. Oh, it's a little buffering. Oh. You getting up? Um, yeah, don't take my spot. No, I wasn't even thinking. Don't take, drink. Don't care. Don't Only take my spot. My chair. My chair's the bomb. Don't the take it. Don't good. take it. You're good. You're Leave good. it alone. You're good. You're good. Mom, oh. Mom, are we there Mom, yet? Mom, are we there yet? Stop copying Stop me. Stop copying me. Stop. Stop. Mom. Mom. Stop. 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 Mom, Mom, he's copying me. He's copying me. I'm not copying I'm you. I'm not copying you. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. Wait, wait. You're copying you're me. You're copying me. Mom. Mom. What are you doing? I'm playing. No, yes. I was playing with no, that. No, no, I looked sense. at that last. I'll cash it up for you, no. That was in my vicinity last. Mom, she's looking at me. Mom, Mom, look at her. My she's looking closed. at me. My eyes are closed. You're looking at me. Um, what are you doing? Uh, reading this book. I was playing with that. No. I was playing with that no. and this. Stop touching me. I'm not touching I can feel you. I'm not You're in my space. I'm not in your space. You're touching me. Stop breathing I'm just my looking air. out the window. This is my air. No, you're this touching is your me. Air. I'm not touching you. Mom, who's breathing my air? I'm thinking he's in my space. No, my little pony. My little no, pony. No, we just watched that 400 times. My little pony. DJ Mask. No. My little ah. pony. Oh, uh, protest! My, no, move! No, no! no. Please, 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 please. You already drank yours. This one is thirsty. mine. I have one, okay. one sip. One sip. No! Stop, Mom! Mom! That was a sip. That was a little bit of Stop, stop. I'm going to call Mom. Mom? Once we get to the store, I can go to aisle six. For the rest and, of your day. What? And then when we it get there, no I can get a couple of toys. No. You're, you're singing on purpose. No, I'm not. It's just my favorite yeah, song. You are. It just Mom. popped into my head. Mom. I see. Really? <laughs> uh, anybody relate to that? Maybe? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so the next time you're in a funk, I highly recommend searching up sibling rivalry videos and give yourself a good 30 minutes to enjoy. Probably don't drink water if you're in front of your laptop. It doesn't work well. Okay, anyway. So I guess the good news about the story of Jacob and Esau is that for every parent who feels like they are the original failure when it comes to refereeing their children's sibling rivalry, you are not. Th that distinction, of course, goes to Adam and Eve, whose son Cain was so jealous of his brother Abel, he ended up killing him.
Only four people on the planet and we can't handle it, right? It's like we're programmed to be the king or the queen of the hill and to knock the other person down, even if we share the same DNA. While Jacob and Esau didn't kill each other, they did come close. We hope for children, for the children that we give so much time and energy to and, 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 and you know, nurture. We hope for our children to have this kind of relationship. Here's another picture, right? Isn't that nice? You're like, yes, walking off into the sunset, it's so beautiful. That's what we hope, right? But actually, this is what we get instead. Yeah, yeah, that's what we get, yeah. So in the ancient world, there was a practice of giving a birthright and a blessing to the eldest son. That eldest son would then assume the leadership of the family when the patriarch died, the oldest living adult uh, male relative. And that firstborn son would receive a double portion of the inheritance. Jacob was born just moments after Esau. Actually, the story goes that Jacob was clutching onto the heel of Esau as he came out. That's how badly he wanted to be the firstborn. No luck, Jacob. The sibling rivalry escalated from there. By the time they were adults, it was so bad that Jacob thought nothing of tricking Esau out of both his birthright and his rightful blessing. When Jacob realized that Esau was ready to kill him for being tricked, that's when he ran for the hills, which is kind of in the middle of the story that we have for today. Now, after a long day of running, Jacob stops for the, nice, for the night. He found a nice hard rock for a pillow, and he dreamt of that stairway to heaven. Now, this is not the stairway to heaven immortalized by Led Zeppelin here. Yeah, it's not that stairway to heaven. By the way, just a, an aside, that is the worst song in the world to get stuck to dancing to at a middle school dance. Is it fast or is it slow? It can't make up its mind, right? And it's like 10 minutes long, at least, maybe a year long, I don't know. So if somebody asks you to dance to it that you don't like that person, you are stuck. Anyway, the stairway to heaven in Jacob's dream is the one with the angels. Here's, yep, there you go. Angels coming up and down. As Jacob stood watching heaven come down to earth, God stood next to him and promised him all these things, like great expanses of land, an abundance of children, and God's best blessings. Everything he wanted from his father, everything he had to leave his family for because he was afraid of Esau, God had been planning to give him all along. He never had to steal it. What I've never understood about this story is why Isaac didn't just bless Esau too. Wasn't there more than enough to go around? I mean, we're talking about a big God here, right? And why couldn't Jacob share it with Esau? Why did he have to steal the blessing as if we can steal anything from God, right? We try to do that all the time. Hello, God owns everything we can't actually steal from God. In the end, even though Jacob got away, or he thought he got away with so much, he never got to see his parents again once he ran away. That was the cost of that blessing. Despite the blessings received from both his father and from God, Jacob's life was far from perfect. He gets tricked by his father-in-law. I don't know why he's surprised when he gets tricked by his father-in-law. Like, hello, you're the original trickster, dude. Anyway, he gets tricked by his father-in-law. His wife, Rachel, is barren. Eventually she has children, but it takes a long time. And then he has to run away for his life again when his father-in-law gets tired of his trickery and kicks him out. Maybe if he hadn't been so obsessed with grabbing everything from Esau, life would have been better for poor old Jacob. So Laura and Jake, 
little Harlow is so young, so sweet and innocent looking. I'm sure that she and Hunter are getting along so well, right? Perfectly. And of course, I mean, you're like amazing parents, right? Of course, of course. But soon enough, I, I'm afraid, sibling rivalry will rear its ugly head and Hunter and Harlow will be vying with each other for your attention. While this story is a little too close for comfort, at least you're in good company as you figure out how to be the best parents that you can be. And really, being the best parents that we can be is not so different from working on being the best human beings that we can be, right? How do we teach our children that there's enough to go around? How do we believe that ourselves? How do we help our children understand that they don't have to yank the pacifier out of their sister's mouth? They could just ask their parents for their own. How do we stop taking what doesn't belong to us? How do we help our children trust that our love for them is boundless? that it will never run out, that it is so huge they could never use it all up. How do we convince ourselves that God's love is boundless, that it will never run out, that we can never use it all up? Maybe we need to spend more time with that stairway to heaven, not listening to Led Zeppelin, please, but the stairway to heaven in the presence of God, remembering that heaven is continually coming down to earth to bless us with an abundance of love and peace and joy and everything else that we need. Maybe it's time for us to trust that there are enough pacifiers to go around. So Jake and Laura, in those moments when you don't think you have an ounce of energy left, to deal with Hunter and Harlow's fighting. But Hunter, you're not gonna fight with your sister, right? Oh, you are, okay. All right, you heard it here, people. You heard it here. What's that? Okay, okay. So Jake and Laura, may you remember that stairway full of angels. And may you accept the blessings they bring with them, patience, second and third and fourth and one hundredth chances to do it again, laughter, enough room for, yeah, on our laps for everyone, and a love deeper than we can imagine. In the end, that's what baptism is all about, cleansing us from the sibling rivalry that we can't quit and giving us yet another fresh start. That's why we start every worship service remembering our baptisms. We need a lot of reminders. So let me remind us one more time. God loves us more than we can imagine. And when we tap into that love, when we see those angels coming and going, it changes us. I don't know about you, but I am ready to Mark Harlow as God's own and to get yet another reminder of just how deep God's love is for us. Harlow, are you ready? Hunter, is she ready? Okay. Amen. Let's do this. Help me, Hunter? Perfect. All right, so we are going to, all right, so we're going to have, yep, have our, the sponsors come up. Hunter, do you know those people? Yeah? Do you know those people? Okay, okay, cool. Okay, all right. So can you help me with this napkin? All right, because when, after we put the water on Harlow's head, can you help me wipe her dry? Okay, so you're going to hold that. Okay, it's not going to be for a while, so don't get too excited. Okay. What's that? For a little bit of
excited. Me too. Me too. Okay. All right, do you think Carlo is excited? No. <laughs> Yeah, do you think she's a little nervous? Yeah. I think she'll be fine, though. Look, she's got a little smile for you. Do you think she had a little smile for you? Yes, she did. She did, I saw it. Okay, shall we start? Okay. All right, so in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. And so sponsors. Jake and Laura, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Harlow baptized into Christ? As you bring Harlow to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Spirit, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. I know that sounds like a lot. You got hopefully, let us pray that you have a whole lifetime to do that with her, right? Also, you've got some great sponsors here, and you have this whole church here to do it with you. And so I ask, do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? Quentin and Michelle, as sponsors, do you promise to nurture Harlow in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. Excellent. People of God, because again, this is a covenant, right? Do you promise to support Harlow and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We do. Oh, it feels so good to hear that. And so I ask us all to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. I like your dancing, Hunter. It's awesome. Give me some on that. Yeah. All right. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give all thanks and praise. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery. And raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so how about if you take the little shells? 
You know why we use a shell? It's because when Jesus was baptized, that's what they say John the Baptist used. Is that okay if I use a big one? Okay. All right. So you're going to help me? Okay. So I should try to take your sister. Let's see. Do you think she's going to be okay? I think if she sees you, if she sees her big, her big brother, I think she'll be okay. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Okay. You ready? Okay. Get some water. Carlo Grace Huffman, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, quick, quick, quick. Okay, there you go. Okay. There. Okay, can you wipe her up? Good job. Is she okay? She's okay. We did. We did. She did great. Here, let me get a few more drips. A few more drips. There. Okay, here, you hold that. You keep holding that. Okay. Whew. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you gave your daughter new birth, cleanse her from sin, and raise her to eternal life. Sustain Harlow with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Okay. Okay, okay people, you've got a part now. Let's go. You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. Carlo Grace, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Okay. Yes. All right, so let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, we welcome you, you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And so I present to you Harlow Grace Huffman, the newest member of St. Barnabas Lutheran Church. So um, a, a couple things. First, um, so the candle, you're, you're going to take it home. And then every year on her baptismal birth date, if you light it and tell her the story, and Hunter, you can tell her the story of how you helped put water on her head, okay? Can you do that? Okay, perfect. Perfect. And then um, we have her baptismal uh, certificate and for Quentin and Michelle, thank you so much for stepping up and being a part of her, fam her, her life and encouraging her on her walk with, with God. Thank you for taking on that responsibility. And then, of course, her certificate as well. So we're going to sing. And I, I know you got up and you sat down. So you're going to get up again, and you're going to sing. I'm going to do the baby uh, parade. Hunter, do you want to come with me and introduce her to everybody? Okay, perfect. And then if you all would like to go sit down, I will bring her back. Trust me, because I'm not ready for this um, in my life. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're going to sing. And you're going to come with me, Hunter, and it's going to be great. Okay. Oh, and here also is a blanket for her that somebody in our congregation makes. So you get to take that with you. All right. You ready, Hunter? All right. Let's do this.
holy, holy God, in calling forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you show your love for your whole universe. You invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. Faithful God, increase our trust in your promises and move your church toward acts of love and faith. May our leaders dream dreams of your vision for the world and lead us to work diligently for your coming kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Bless the earth and seas, O God, that your sustaining power be at work through us to restore creation where it is broken and to protect it where it is whole. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Bless the nations of the world, O God, that your peace and justice may prevail over us all. Make your healing presence known, especially in those countries torn by disaster or war. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Bless our communities, O God, that reconciliation be our goal and Help us to bring your peace and justice both where we live and throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Bless all who suffer, O God, that they may know healing and recovery and that all who comfort them show your love. We pray especially for Kathy, Frank, Audrey, Beth, Priscilla, Tom, Lori, Dennis, Katie, Carol, Bill, Roger, David, Robert, John, the Vote family, Charlie, Pastor Kara, Carol, and those we name silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy Mercy is is great. Please offer your own prayers of joy or concern, ending with, hear us, O God. Dear Lord, please bless all those suffering from mental illness, especially the youth of this congregation. We pray that you give them the support and resources they need to be whole in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless Harlow in her baptism, O God. May she always feel the joy of your presence in her life, and may she always know your love and grace. Strengthen her parents, Laura and Jake. Give them wisdom and patience as they raise their children. Thank you for her sponsors, Quentin and Michelle, and their willingness to support Harlow throughout her life. May they always be strong witnesses for her. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace. Peace. So now is the time when we would uh, collect our offerings. So uh, if you have offerings, we have plates on the out, uh, um, outside on the way out because nobody wants to touch this afterwards. Don't put it in this one or people, nobody will get it until next week. I did that last time. <laughs> um, uh, but also we do communion on the way out. We call it grace to go because it's just easier that way in the time of COVID. Um, 
So Harlow's family, you're welcome to, to join us and then come back for pictures if you would like. At this, at this church, all are welcome at this table. And now let us imagine all the things that we have put into this offering plate, all these, the ways that we have offered ourselves to God's service, and let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us with these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we do it to this day. We eat and drink. We remember Jesus' sacrifice, God's great love, the forgiveness and grace that we receive. We take it into ourselves and we take it out into the world with us. And now let us pray with confidence in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, So for those of you worshiping with us at home, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, the rest of us, as I said, will get it on the way out. Receive now the final blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.